uh, uh, what I'm asking is for all of you to really engage. Um, our max transit system is really struggling. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of you have read in the paper, and it has become a department that really needs a lot of help. We're spending about $14 million on this system that is struggling. Uh, we recently raised our fuel tax in hopes to subsidize this program a little bit more. And what SSFM will be doing for us is really looking at routes, ridership, that would create a system that really helps get people from their homes to their jobs, to their places of work and back home. But not only you know, for adults working, but even our kids who may be using it you know, for school or getting to sports. Um, and that, that's why, please, just really engage tonight. Um, for us, at the end of all of this, it's our hope that SSFM puts together a plan that works for the entire community. But what then falls on to the council is how we pay for it all. And whether it's through bus ridership fares, or subsidizing the program, or looking at other modes of grant applications through federal grant and aid, or state grant and aid, that's gonna fall on the county. So I really ask that you folks engage tonight and help us fix this system and put together a system that works for all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council. And I also would like to acknowledge Council Representative Aaron Chung's aide, Amy Miwa. Amy? Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate that on behalf of Council Member Chung. Um, next, I'd like to introduce to you uh, a representative from the Mass Transit Agency, which is responsible for the bus system, and they're our client uh, for SSFM. And so, representing the Mass Transit Agency, please welcome Tiffany Kai. Hello, welcome everyone to our transit meeting for Hilo. Um, I'd like to thank <coughs> Council Member Sue Leloy as well as the other members for supporting this um, project as well as the administration and SSS, SSFM for doing such a spectacular job. Um, thank you for all being here. This is a very important meeting and we look forward to um, your input, recommendations, suggestions, and feedback. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Ryan Fujii, and he's with the State Department of Transportation Planning Office. So I hear uh, your comments. Um, we really want to hear what you have to say. I'm here because our office is the recipient of Federal Transit Administration funds, and basically our office uh, distributes those funds to the rural areas. So, Oahu, uh, not Oahu, I'm sorry, uh, Kauai, Maui, and Kauai County. Uh, so there's various programs that we help fund and pass the monies through. We also have some that go to the nonprofits to help them with transportation. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ryan. Appreciate it. We scored. We've got County Council here. We've got uh, Tiffany Kai here with Mass Transit Agency, and we've got DOT here. So uh, to and better inform you about the whole plan, now that you've looked at all the different boards, we have the lead transportation planner for SSFM International to present to us the plan. And please join me in welcoming Cheryl Soon. Aloha everyone, my name is Cheryl Soon and I have been the project manager for the work we've been doing up to now, which I'm going to describe a little bit, as well as the point we're at now where we have made we focus tonight on the service improvements um, that we have identified, and then we'll be moving into a draft master plan. This is the fifth of five meetings that we have held. I've also gone to uh, a couple of uh, community associations and others um, in order to chat through uh, the recommendations. But if I could start, I would like to have Mel stand and be recognized. Kel? If you could stand to be recognized. I was standing by the board. Oh, all right. Carrying him and I think it's his wife. Um, 
and she was saying, why did they write this? And I turned around and I said, what, what's, what's wrong? And she said, this hasn't been here for 30 years. It's been here since 78. And then Kel said, no, actually 75. So I'm counting on my fingers. OK, should have been 40 years. I said, now how do you know that? He's been a driver since the beginning when her Matioshi started the system. So, right? And he's still a driver on the Ohora. Do I, did I remember, that, remember that correctly? So mahalo for that. That's awesome. Oh, you were, you were a driver too, Kimo? Yeah. Well, let's give Kimo a hand too then. <laughs> demographics um, for the island. This is still not quite how the idea. I need to get it back onto the screen again. Um, we looked at the demographics of the island and then we worked with the planning department to look at what the projections for the island were, at where, where is it growing and where could we anticipate additional need for ridership. So we did a, a needs and assessment study essentially. We we did a document review, and then we did, in March, we did a rider survey. We surveyed every rider on every bus. We put somebody on the bus, handed them out, took them from them as they got off, and we got feedback from the riders themselves. Um, we've been looking at the inventory of buses, the condition of buses, um, what's been happening in the past couple of years where We've had more and more stress on the system because of the, the buses breaking down and therefore not completing their routes. And um, we are at the point where we are making these improvements uh, to bring to you tonight. Um, so change that. The system's been in existence for 40 years. Um, and a lot of the changes have kind of come by trial and error. You know, a, a mayor would come along and have an idea or, or the transit administrator for a long time, Tom Brown, and, or an opportunity presented itself. So they go, okay, let's try it. And that's kind of a nice thing. When you do things by trying to, everything's not gonna always work. Um, but a lot of things have worked and have given us the um, ground material in which to say, yeah, keep going with them. One of the things that has been extremely impressive to me is the widespread belief in the community, in all the communities we've been to, that having a well-functioning transit system is vital to people's lives, to their economies, to their well-being, and this system, I feel, is supported. People, when it doesn't work well, they want to, have to see what can we do to make it better. So this is, this is a wonderful thing uh, to observe. The, the um, system was designed and, and is currently heavily used by commuters and also by students um, to get to school. But really people use it for, you name it, medical appointments, shopping, visiting, you know, etc. Uh, it is, the routes are primarily designed to go in and through Hilo. And what we have learned is that every community has distinct needs. They aren't all the same, so that this is not a one, one solution, one size fits all. We have recommendations for each community that are, that are slightly different uh, from each other. I'll, I want to say something about the fleet next. The number of buses that the county owns um, are different manufacturers, different sizes, and that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, it means, in some cases, that the buses are so old that you can't even get the parts on Craigslist. So that's not a good thing. 
you have some instances where um, the, the mechanics are having to learn just far too many types of vehicles. Certainly there are a lot of things that are standard, but, but, there, are, but there are unique features on, on each of them, and that's been a problem. Um, and so we're, not all vehicles work on all topographies. So the terrain where it goes, and so we're, we're trying to make some stronger recommendations about where and when um, you use what type of um, vehicle. Um, the ridership um, dictates that primarily you need a larger size of vehicle. Most of the routes are a long enough distance that we want to make sure everybody gets a seat. This is not New York City where you can strap hold and, and go for 45 minutes standing. It's, it's, it's not what we're looking for in this system. We really are looking to right size the vehicles and the ridership um, so that people can ride comfortably. The maintenance yard, which had been co-located with DPW, um, is really quite outloaded. <laughs> And a new one is under construction and should be uh, finished um, shortly. And, and that will present new, better opportunities for how you keep your inventory, how you run it through preventive maintenance, how you do your heavy duty maintenance, how you do your daily washes and gasoline. So um, lots of opportunities will present themselves with this new maintenance facility. Some of the priority activities that are, are, you know, they're not just sitting around twiddling the thumbs waiting for us to finish our study. It, it, that's not the nature of the transit business. They're really working hard on focusing on improved customer service. They, they know, and our work has certainly emphasized, there's, there's a lot of things that need to be due to get better customer services. And, and that goes from the customer call-in number, you know, to sometimes the drivers, to just a whole number of things, what happened when, when a bus breaks down, how you communicate that information. Um, we're trying to get the buses fixed so that they're back on the road. We're trying to get replacement buses in the city and county of Honolulu. Um, gave the county of Hawaii seven buses in July, and they're being used in service now. That's, that's give, given us a lot of breathing room. Um, those are buses that had been promised to others. But um, the mayor, uh, your mayor, was very persuasive that you had such a, a critical situation that um, they were given to you instead of others that they had been promised to. Um, and then, of course, moving out of the old facility, getting rid of the decommissioned buses that aren't being used anymore, as well as and the other trash that's over there. Um, Tiffany has written three federal grants. They get processed through Ryan's office. <coughs> And um, uh, two of them are to get additional buses, and one is for operating assistance. And many, many more things. But these are some of the priority activities that um, your hardworking staff has been doing. And I must say, I feel you have a very small number of people doing a very big job and, and um, letting the cat out of the bag a little bit. One of my recommendations is going to be you've got to staff. You, you, because, God forbid, K Tiffany isn't even allowed to get sick, you know, have a sick day. It's, it's just too much, you know. They, you really need more people and some backup systems um, in the hardworking staff that you have. So let's, let's uh, not um, take any more time, but get right into the master plan. Let's start with why would you have a master plan? A master plan is intended to be forward-looking. It's meant to be a shared vision, not just one or two people's, but what does everyone really want to have in the system? And then to try to document it. Um, the goal is to have quality service, a uh, service that is um, implemented in an efficient manner. The plan closely looks at those alternatives and explains why you chose the ones you did. And that's what I'll be doing over the next few weeks, is saying, OK, these are our recommendations, but why did we choose them? What did people say to us in the community meetings? What, what wasn't working and what was working? And, and to give a, a rationale for it. And um, this is a baseline study. You've actually never had a master plan before in the 40 years. So this will be, as you do, do them in the future, this will be um, your baseline. 
I will say that um, uh, in receiving, in, in applying for federal grants, it is very advantageous to have a master plan and to say, we're asking for these you know, two 40-foot buses. Why? Because our master plan says that we need to have 12 and we only have eight right now. This will help us get us towards our goal. So it gives you an underlying rationale. And as uh, Councilman Member Lee Lori, who is head of the, is it called Budget or Finance Committee, um, as they make their decisions, they want to make sure, they want some degree of comfort that they're making the right choices because it fits into a larger scheme. And so th these are some of the many reasons why we're preparing this master plan. Um, I, 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 while I was waiting for this, I was um, explaining a lot of things on this slide that we rolled the buses, we went through the complaint blogs, um, we did the survey of riders, and this um, public ground of meetings is what's been going on so far. This is a list of our tasks. And so the task two was to create a vision. You saw that at station one. Um, task three is the public involvement program, which you see going on right now. Task four was existing conditions, reviewing pre previous studies in the passenger survey, which have been completed. Task five is the trends and future needs. Task six is the service improvement program, which is the subject of this meeting. And the last three are the tasks that we'll be working on in the months ahead, doing the capital plan, doing a financial plan, and then doing a draft and final master plan. So the vision that we have proposed is create a high quality, multimodal transportation <laughs> system that provides safe, reliable, convenient, environmentally responsible, and cost-effective mobility choices that meet the needs of our residents and visitors. And you saw that at the station over here, and we asked you to, if you concur with that vision statement. The previous vision statement had been, be the best transit system in the world. And that's a nice goal, but it didn't seem practical. Yeah. And we weren't even sure how we would measure it. So we have proposed something that, that perhaps we can keep ourselves accountable. And, uh, I'm not trying to load the case. I, we are looking for your feedback if you, if you concur with us putting forward a new vision statement. Um, we have proposed five goals um, that would help achieve the goal, the, um, the vision. One is to make transit riding easier and more desirable. The second is to create a system to serve all people. Third is to use transit as a tool, and by that I mean how can we use it so that people can interact, get information, um, be a gathering place perhaps at the hubs or at the station. How well, what else can you do besides give a ride? How, what else could transit do in the community? Creating hubs that have amenities, information, um, <coughs> ATM machines, etc and then to phase it. We've had two or three other good recommendations for goals, so please, if you have a goal that you think is not reflected here, uh, please let me know. Uh, real quickly, the passenger survey that we conducted uh, in March, 29% um, had been riding for less than a year. That, that had surprised me. 15% um, said that they would drive if they did not have this bus ride available to them. 84.5% said that they were dependent upon the bus, um, although about just under 36% said that they could get a ride from someone else if they really had to. So what that means is, okay, the bus didn't come today, for whatever reason, I could get a ride. But on a regular basis, no. 84%, 84.5% are saying, I really need that bus. I need that bus in my life to do what I have to do. 57% say they're riding um, five or more times a week, so they're really regular customers. 27% say even 10 rides uh, or more a week. Almost 30% were students. That was a little higher than we expected. Um, half are employed either full or part-time. 
43% female making about 67% uh, male. Seven, uh, only 7.6 are tourists. That's not a large number. So the tourists are, it's not that they don't know that we exist. It's that perhaps our routes and our time schedules uh, don't fit what, they, what their needs are. And we've had comments on that um, from other, in other meetings. Um, 30, we, the, the MTA wanted to know if we put out information in another language, um, is that needed? 34% said that they speak a language other than English at home. That doesn't mean they don't speak English, but they're speaking something other than English at home. And the predominant uh, language was Filipino. One of the dialects of Filipino. So that, that gives information to MTA for them. Um, and as we make the changes, um, getting that information out is absolutely critical for people to understand why a change is being made and how it's going to impact, um, affect their life. Well, you will see shortly that we're recommending moving into a hub and spoke system. I was the director of transportation at the city and county when we moved into a hub and spoke situation there. And we found, in fact, um, with both Japanese, Filipino, and Ch Chinese, that there were specific grocery stores where they bought their ethnic groceries um, who would get the information out. And when there was confusion in the first few days, those kind of places were calling us and saying, look, my, the customers are asking me, give me some information that I can give them. So there are resources like yeah, that. You're referring to City and County Honolulu? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, 30 63% rated Kellyanne as either excellent or good. That's that's a compliment. Um, but 818 written comments. We provided space for written comments, and there was just it was so rich with information. People telling us things that hadn't been a specific um, question on the form. That the things that they felt we needed to know about. Um, most the most frequent <coughs> comment was. Please get buses that don't break down. <laughs> Fair enough. We know what the number one priority is, and I think even those who aren't bus drivers, bus riders, would concur with that. Um, people ask that the timetables be realistic. What's happening is that the published schedule for several of the routes, it's impossible to make it. And so if they can't make it, how does a person know what time to be at that bus? You know, if you're always going to be 20 minutes late, let's just change the timetable that you publish so that you know when you are going to be there. Now, that's over and above those who are asking for an app or some kind of a, um, a vehicle locator so that they can say, okay, it's this far away, it's going to be here in, in a few more minutes. So that's over and above that. Um, Many are asking for more frequent service, particularly on holidays and on weekends, so we're taking that into account. Um, there are many comments related to shelters, to affairs, to the different comfort features. And very positive feedback of the drivers. Just one or two exceptions which people will write to us, but on the whole, very positive feedback about the um, drivers, which means they're a critical part of the success uh, of what is going on. It's, it, it's critical that this system be well coordinated with the planning going on uh, in the county and not only the general plan, which is in the process of being updated, but the community development plans where community members have gotten together to say what kind of community they want and in each instance, they have identified what it is that they want for transportation. So we've kind of sucked that material out and incorporated it into uh, what we need to accomplish. Um, land use and transportation have to be integrated with each other to be successful. Both plans are using the um, state forecast for population in 2035 uh, forecast to go from the current 202,600 to close to 277,000. And what does that mean? Um, we know that elderly and disabled 
um, populations are growing at a faster rate than any other subpopulation groups. That has implications to uh, both the regular system and to the paratransit system. Um, and then making sure that we provide uh, options for special needs. So in a very general sense, what the general plan and the community plans and others were telling us is that uh, we know that Pune and Kabu are underserved areas, both are having limited services and infrastructure. The roadway capacity uh, is, is affecting how we can service that area, in particular because many of the roads are unpaved. It's making it harder for us to get into the subdivisions, and there's not an immediate fix for that. So that's been one of our top challenges in this plan. And yet we know that the fastest growing housing areas are in the Pune district. Um, the Hawaii Paradise Park, Orchid Land, etc. Um, so this, is, this has been one of the top issues that we've been contending with. Um, and yet employment is and will remain concentrated in Hilo and in Kona. Um, Pune is served by routes 10 and 40, and they are asking for additional frequency both in the early morning and in the late afternoon, plus service that goes beyond just serving commuters. Um, we are recommending a hub be located in KL as well as in um, Hoa. The Kona service is uh, served by several um, routes that are already established, and by the way, we put the route numbers on these. You don't, you don't currently call them by route numbers, and I think the back of your agenda probably tells you uh, the name of the route and what number uh, we have given to it. Um, if we're gonna go to a GPS system with an app, we're gonna have to have numbers of the buses and numbers on the bus stops. So we're moving in that direction. Um, but they're looking for some additional circulator routes and greater frequency, as well as continuation of the bus shelter program. South Kahala is served also about about five routes, and we have some tweaking of the alignments that we need to do there, as well as looking for um, some new routes on new roads that have been created around the Civic Center. Uh, North Kahala is looking for more Malcolm Akai access, improved bus shelters and stops, and some ability to go off road. Kamakua, which is really kind of sandwiched between what's happening in Hilo and what's happening in Waimea, um, probably looking towards having some park and ride facilities where we can go in and pick up people uh, in larger numbers. And then Hilo. Hilo currently served by five routes and three intra-Hilo routes, looking for more frequent service in the Hilo area and integration with the shared taxi um, program uh, and upgrades at both of the hubs at uh, Moheo and at Prince uh, Kuhio. Okay, I'm going to shift focus just a second. I'm going to take a drink the rest of my mouth. But, um, Cheryl, before you switch focus, can I ask you a quick question based on the surveys that you did? Mm -hmm. And you might get to this later. What is the like annual ridership or monthly ridership of the, of the Helions? Like when you survey, how many people ride? Linda, do you have that? Yeah. And an average is five. Yeah, Linda Freistacki, it has been really doing a lot of the um, hard work in figuring out all the routes. And the, <laughs> the annual ridership is just under one million. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and over the years, we did see the ridership drop. Um, you know, and that kind of attributes from the fuel cost being at an all-time low, not to mention um, this past year's the challenges that we've been going through. So we did see a drop in ridership. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. So nationally, as well as in the state of Hawaii and in this county, Everyone's, in, when they look at transportation, is looking at it being multimodal. Uh, I've been in the transportation business almost 40 years, and it used to be all cars, cars, and cars. What can we do for cars, cars, and cars? 
Now we look at what can we do for transit, what can we do for bicycles, what can we do for pedestrians. And I remind people that every bus rider um, is also a pedestrian because they're, they're generally walking, in some cases walking quite far to and from um, their bus stop. But it was interesting to me, I, over the weekend I was tabulating all the comments from the course four meeting, how much interest there is in the bicycle mode. So making sure we have a sufficient number of bike racks on the buses, making sure we have bus storage locations, and there are even some suggestions regarding um, no longer charging for bicycles on the, um, uh, on the bus. Right now, if the county has the bus, there are two positions for a bicycle. The tour buses that they end up renting um, have none. So that's, that's a problem for some people. Um, so bike and pedestrian access is as much a part of planning for transit as the actual routes are. 20% um, of the Helion riders tell us that they ride more than, that they walk more than five blocks in order to get to uh, the bus. The complete street policy was adopted in this county in 2011. That means whenever you work on the streets, think about cars, bus, transit, bicycle. Transportation network companies, like, you know, I'm not advertising for Uber or Lyft or anybody like that, but they're increasingly part of the transportation world and they're, they're here, they haven't played a huge role, maybe yet or maybe ever, but we want to be aware of what they might be able to, what part of the solution that they may be. And then again, looking at trends and what's happening in the transportation business, um, using uh, GIS and apps is standard for, tr for transit systems now um, to locate the bus and calculate when it will arrive. The electronic displays at transit hubs saying, you know, when the bus is going to come, fairly standard now in the transportation business. Um, Video surveillance on buses, 50-50. Um, automatic next stop announcements from a pre-recorded voice. Um, automatic counting systems. Um, fare collection using smart cards. And here we have somebody using a, a wrist device in order to um, get onto the, the bus and pay their fare. So it's kind of sky's the limit and we're trying to make a recommendation of which package of technologies make the most sense uh, for the sign. <coughs> so currently we have three types of routes on this island. We have the connector routes which connect uh, communities, so from Hilo to Waimea. We have circulator routes which go within a certain community connecting neighborhoods and then taking them to a transfer location. And then we have the commuter routes, the most um, well-known are the ones going from Pahoa all the way to South Kahala Resorts, where people are on for a couple of hours or more. So those are the three types you have right now. We are adding the concept of hub and spoke. With that, the longer, at the longer routes meet up with the shorter routes at a hub. Very similar to what we're all pretty used to in the airline business now. You're going to, you know, get into Chicago and then you're going to transfer to something that's a shorter route. Flex service is something new. And what that means, or new, would be new for this community, is that we would take a route and that bus would be able to go off of its route to pick you up at your driveway if you called 24 hours in advance and made a reservation. No more than three quarters of a mile, must be on a paved road, and you had to have called in advance. So that when uh, Cal comes in in the morning, he goes, okay, I got four deviations today, and he works them into his route. Zone service, which also would be new for this island, 
is something that people have started doing in rural areas across the country where rides may be available just a couple of days a week. There's not enough demand to make it five days or seven days, but maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays having something that took them to the mall. They could at least try to schedule something into knowing which day, so it might be Monday, Wednesday, but um, a couple of days a week in having a zone service. The zone service also is something that we would be asking people to call in for 24 hours in advance. So both zone and flex are services that we're really not sure there's a demand. But it could well be that by the time we are doing the zone service for a year or two, we go, oh, this is a natural route. We have enough people coming in that we'll make this into a route. So it's kind of a way of testing things out. And and we'll, um, Linda at her station, we have recommended areas for this, primarily in Kapu, in Hamakul Coast, Waimea. There's, there's a more limited number of areas for flex and zone that we're recommending because the areas I haven't mentioned, Kilo and Kona, we're already into a full hub and spoke system in those areas. We know we have the ridership. Where does Ocean View fall? Is that the Kau area or the Puna area? <laughs> Ka'u, we are putting into the to the volcano, excuse me, we're putting into Ocean the Kona era in, in our studies, right? Ocean yes, View. I can uh, talk to you about Ocean View. Okay, okay. I'm just curious where, what the, the, the comes in. Okay, yes. so let me, I'll give you a little, a little sidebar here. We did not hold meetings in either Ka'u or in Hamakua. Instead, through the offices of the council members, Council Member David and Council Member Poindexter, we sent speci special surveys out to them. And I've already read the results that have come back from um, the Ka'u area, in particular Ocean View. And they're saying, we need service in both directions. I mean, that's really the comment that's coming in. So um, we're, we're working with that. But um, those are still coming in. They, they, they were sent on, uh, online to them. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the recommendations for Hilo is that you be fully into a hub and spoke system, that you would have connector routes one and two, which are going to Kona and back from Kona, and that you have the 10 and the 40, which are the Hilo Kahoa volcano routes, and that you have three circulated routes. So this map depicts the, the system for Hilo, and again, Linda can go into more detail um, later at her station if you have specific questions. She's already um, been receiving comments and has some ideas about tweaking it to make sure that it's, it's meeting senior centers, employment centers, um, senior housing, and some other places. But, but this is the road system that is being recommended to be followed. Um, for Hilo. So, um, Circulator Route 101, Keokaha, also includes nine trips into the airport. We've had a lot of comments about airports in the last four, me four meetings. Um, some route changes in order to delete Baker and add service on Pu'ueo and Wainaku Streets, and service to the King's Landing every other trip as well as serving um, downtown parking ride, which we hope gets created down near the Bayfront. Got your picture? I'm going to change. <coughs> I can bring it up for you again later. Uh, circulated Route 102, Kamana, um, recommending some alignment changes along Kilauea Avenue, eliminating parts of the service where there's low ridership, providing uh, service to the senior residents, um, around Mo'o'ulu, and then adding uh, more bus stops with signs and benches, which seems to be an issue um, in the downtown Hilo area. Circulated Route 103, Waiakea Uka, um, making some alignment changes so that it better serves um, the ridership, and uh, Linda can go into the details with you. 
um, paratransit and the shared uh, ride taxi, elderly being the fastest growing population, I mentioned that earlier, will increase from 18% um, in 2015 to over 21% in 2040 and will keep climbing. This, therefore, the senior housing and community centers that we have must be served and more will be, will be built. So we need to continuously make sure that they are served along the route. I do think that having the system we have um, recommends certain sites for senior housing. Oh, it's, it's within a close proximity of, of transit service because at a certain age and increasingly it's about age 75 people um, stop having the use of a driver license or a vehicle mm -hmm. at their disposal. Um, those who live within the paratransit service area can use both the shared ride taxi and the paratransit service with advanced reservations. So this in green is uh, shows you what the paratransit service area is. It's, it's pretty substantial. It's, it's pretty impressive, really. And um, as you know, the paratransit system, as of, I think, July, has only been in existence one year. So it's extremely, um, it's proven extremely valuable. And the word is out, and people are using it. And I think the use of it is going, only going to grow and grow. So just a, um, a mention, you're familiar with hubs are, but everybody in the other meetings wasn't necessarily. But the main purpose of a hub is a transport point where someone can go from one vehicle, either someone's dropping them off onto a bus, one bus to bus, Uber to bus, whatever it may be, but generally meant as a transfer location. Um, and therefore, people might have to wait at them so they're higher candidates for shelters and benches. Um, imperative that we have information about the bus schedules going on there, the maps, the fares, bus arrival time. Information at the hubs is really critical. Can add other amenities like the bike racks or bike storage, vending machines, ATM machines. Um, you're all familiar, I think, with um, well, O'Hale just down the street. Other, other hubs are being proposed for Kona, Waimea, uh, and in Kona. Some future possibilities for hubs is they eventually can be places where you co-locate retail, daycare, community services. This is kind of what we meant by early on with the word tool, using transit as a tool. This um, shows how a retail kiosk you know, could look. Um, but they become central gathering places in the villages. And most of the community development plans call for having this type of facility in their um, communities. <coughs> so once you get into a hub and spoke system, it's almost like sky's the limit. Um, some of them may then have a maintenance facility or be a place where, where if necessary, the driver says, hey, you know, I'm starting to get a flashing light or my oil level looks low, you know, meet me at the hub and potentially a maintenance worker could come and meet up with them there. Um, the, they, can, they could eventually become places where a driver actually reports to the hub and picks up the bus at the hub rather than you know, going back to some base camp. Um, and certainly their communication points, important communication points. Oops. So what follows, what happens after tonight um, we will revise and complete our service improvements based on these, the feedback that we've been receiving, which has been really wonderful. Um, we'll be looking at some short-term recommendations. We'll be looking at the intermediate recommendations, which may mean, hey, we have to get some more equipment in order to do it, but then you could put it in place. And then long-term long converting um, more of the island down to the hub and spoke system, increasing the frequencies, etc. We will prepare a capital plan, what's it going to cost to buy the equipment or to, to build the bus shelters or the hubs, and then an overall financial plan which matches the capital equipment with the operational, what is the cost for the drivers and the mechanics and the administrative time. And then the final step is to um, 
write the transit um, master plan. But in between, we'll have a draft and we'll come up for public meetings again. So timeline for completion. The service plan is being drafted, circulated, commented right now. The capital and financial plans are being drafted in November, so they start tomorrow morning. Um, the final master plan will come out the first quarter of 2018, at, at which time we'll hold that second round of public meetings. So mahalo for your attention. I'll turn it back over to David. Thank to you, Cheryl. Bus that leaves Hilton right below a village for right the end. The bus disappeared. So wait, the so bus disappeared? The bus is not available anymore. Yeah, yeah. One was taken away. Okay. It disappeared. I saw I saw it talk. Okay. Uh, That's fine. So when the 3.30 bus for whatever rival reason doesn't show up, now they back up to a to two buses they come between 420 and 435. Okay. Okay, so where do all the riders go? There are, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of riders on the 330 bus. Right now it's Roberts. So For the hotel? Yes. They break down. Yes. Things break down. Yes. Okay? Everybody just back up. Never and there are two buses afterwards on the occasions that it occurs. People don't go home until maybe 11, 11, 15 at night. Or some guys sleep over at the hotel. Yes. Okay. So. Let me make sure we got this correct. Um, Okay, no, four to five. Four, the, 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 is this right? 4 to 5 p.m. bus from Hilton's not available anymore. There's the still four, the rider. It's the 4 to 5. 4 to 5. Four four five. In you. Four. And, uh, and yet there's still plenty of riders, and so there's delays. If, if the 330 bus doesn't show up, yes. they got to go to the 420 got to 435 bus. Okay. And so that's good. a larger uh, ridership up. because housekeeping is a big department yes. at the Hilton. That's right. So yes. they get off at quarter to four. Yes. So they normally catch the four or five, which that would help. And but then now, there's other fine. riders that oh. go on the four thirty and yes. so on and so on. But now there's no four or five, so all those riders have to get on the second. The if the three thirty don't show what up, that's what you're saying. Try okay. this one. Okay. If the Helion bus they come four twenty, four twenty five, don't show up. And there's only Roberts going home. Yes. So it's what, what only now? seat available, and you can't get on. Yeah. So when Roberts comes in that line, if it's full, do they? That's, that's it. That's right. Everybody's that's left back. Yeah. So then you're stuck. <laughs> you're stuck. It doesn't happen weekly, but when it happens, it. it oh sucks. sure, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Sucks. Okay. It's terrible. Okay. Sure, you're Another stuck. comment. Yeah. I got yeah. it. Let, 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 let him finish. Yeah, okay. let him finish. Kimo. I got I'll come you. To this, you. This one is. Very important. Okay. I go tell them this way. We all class as animals. We homo sapiens. Okay, ready? So we can be adjusted. It's simple. You tell us park at this parking lot. We're not parking someplace else. You guys come up with letters and assignments. We are going to conform to you. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't catch the bus, right? So yeah. senses to argue and follow. So you hear my statement now. Okay. Listen. You send a memo to the guys that catch the 335 bus. Okay. They don't make no single file lines. No order. They bunch up. Okay. 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 Wow. Every once in a while it causes rub because when you get into that bus, mm -hmm. no push me, no push, whatever, whatever. Sure. Yeah, okay. You look at who, who, yeah. It's all on them. Yeah. Because how they ride a ship conducting themselves on the sidewalk. Yes. Get nothing to do with the hell your bus. Right. Two good drivers, Wayne and Danny. Get no issues with them, none whatsoever. They show up the majority of the time, and unless, like I say, a bus breaks down, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so here goes. You guys gonna, I'm not saying please, you guys gonna send a memo okay. to the guys on the 335 line. They're gonna make a single file line. Well, when okay. Danny guys gonna show up, they gonna stop. Okay. You guys gonna tell Danny guys to always stop Place. One place. Designated place. Designated place. And get in line. And they're going to get in line, the 335 guys. Okay. The bus door no open. If they get bonehead and they don't make single file line, you need the door shut. 
I've seen they don't make no single file line. The busters drive guys. away and leave okay. them right on the sidewalk. Okay. What he's talking about? No, it's pushing and shoving is not safe, and, and it's yeah, intimidating. And, it, and people can get hurt. People and not only that, um, Fully is a worker at the Hilton. Yeah. She organized this bus line. Yes. For all the buses except for the 3:30 because they don't want to conform. Oh. Okay. okay. So. Okay. You Joe guys get the helpful. power and authority. Yeah. You put the memo out. Okay. And they gonna line up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dennis, thank you. That, yeah. I okay. appreciate no. that. Thank that's you very much. Then uh, no more stress and who? Yeah, yeah. Who no, who? I, it, that's not. That's not. You've just worked all day. You don't want to have to deal with that. Okay, no. I wanna. Okay, you're next. I know you gotta catch. Yeah. You gotta go. I so gotta go. Gotta go <laughs> <laughs> I know but that anyway, was. Brother, I'm thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Oh, could you? Sorry, before you go, fill out that pink form. The yeah, they, they're going to bring back um, But yes. my, my question is, okay, hey, let's this, listen up. this fixed ride going to people's homes, is that for the regular workers that get on at 315, um, things like that? This, uh, or do, you want, do you want me to quickly explain it? So <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a way, as Cheryl described, it's, it's a way to identify whether a different route is needed by people calling 24 hours in advance and if they live close enough to the designated line on a paved road, if you call 24 hours in advance, the bus can come by and pick you up at your driveway. And so it's just a way to add on to the existing routes and it's a way for people in a neighborhood, for example, to sh demonstrate there's a demand for pickup on that road. Okay, but it's only I within three quarter mile of the desert, only within three quarter miles of the designated route. Okay, the so reason I'm for. asking that is because we get up at three, I mean one o'clock, me, one o'clock, to get ready to come down to the bus stop, yes. to get a good line, yes. a place, good in, place line. in line. And like Dennis, he lives way out by Puna oh. Hall, whatever, Puna yes. whatever. Yes. So you yep. know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, if we can travel far yes. to come to this place, why do we have to go to people's homes? which will back up the time frame. And I don't think that makes so sense. So we'll, we'll take that note, because that's a good uh, you know uh, what I mean? response, and I appreciate because that. Because that would show everybody else late. So your point is you don't want the yeah. bus to be delayed right. by that. If they need to get go to your house, then they need a handy van or something okay. like that. Okay. So, okay, good point. It, it's a uh, concern. We'll make sure we capture that. Because okay. a lot there's, of workers out in Kona, you know, that that's right. area, going to Waikoloa. Like, yes. We all work out there, and the buses are full from here. I yes. think we've got to stop around. Yeah, we just got so to that the same Kimo, subject. Okay, just a second. There's someone else who, want, who is going to leave, has to yeah, leave real yeah, early. Mm -hmm. Let me just get to those who have to leave real early, yeah. and then I'll come to you, Warren, and, and Kimo. Okay, we're going on a different subject of yours. We're on that same But I think Janine's, I think, on the same topic. So then we're coming over. Okay, my, yes. my question is, you know, the first bus is at 3.15? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. okay. You guys implemented that Waimea intrapa yes. to alleviate the low in the morning. In the, per, in which the morning is the one only. I ride. Right. right. Okay. okay. Yep. Because the first bus of the yes. day is jam-packed right out of here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that small bus. Yeah. Trust me. Even though okay. it, they feel, even though it's ugly, small, whatever. We don't care. It's a bus, least, but yeah. it, it alleviates the load because yes. that very first bus of the day, I'm I'm one with one chair sitting in the in yeah. the aisle, standing yeah. for yes. one hour from Bawila, which yeah. is ridiculous. Yes. Okay. So the thing is, now, what's gonna happen when the bus is the three fifteen bus of the day? No leave on time, or the bus driver knows the walk is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting at four wheeler to sometimes four thirty. Like, where's the bus? Pulling your hair yeah. up, yeah. And I don't can call mass transit. Nobody gonna answer the mm -hmm. phone and tell me the bus driver overslept. Well, the bus broke has down. down in, yeah. in which it yes. Yes. yes, you know, a phone tree works for some people, but in mm -hmm. essence, to this transit system, there's gotta be some kind of number that we okay. can probably call to find out if. A bus is going to show up. Okay. Or another driver will be oh, yeah. right. bringing out another bus. Okay. And one more thing okay. with this, you know, I'm glad that we have Roberts, I'm glad we have Jack too, but if there's no seat, people can't get on. Yes. yes. And when, I, I'm tired at the end of the day. Sure. The people at housekeeping, you know, they have no seat, they have, you know, and they have to wait. Yes. Not fair. Okay. No. I, I hear you. I hear you. 
Thank you both. But They're, we're not trying to say anything because we like I mean, you guys love it. to us hotel workers. Uh -huh. You know, but yeah. we pay our taxes. Yeah. I'm a registered uh -huh. voter. That's right. But I need to know right. because I got to get to work like everybody yeah. else. Sure, oh yeah. It's, you know? a, it's a legitimate demand. Yeah. Things happen. Yep. If I got to walk back home 10 minutes, I will get my car and drive my sorry buck to work because <laughs> I don't want to be late. Right. Yeah. As one of the sacrifices. I do. But you need to be informed about the bus. Is it going to show up? And if so, yeah, when? Yeah, that would help us yes. if we can okay. call somebody. But okay. if it happens, we're like putting our thumbs up or in the morning. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other people that need to go. Mary, you're one of them. And, and aloha. Okay, okay, aloha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Send in up, other yeah. comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send in your comments. Give it to your bus driver. And if you can fill out that pink form, too. Yeah, drop it I will. Here. Okay. okay, thank you. And just you. give the feedback forms to your driver. That, and okay. he'll get it, or she'll get it to us. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Mary, you're okay. next. Yesterday I was left behind Ooh. at White Lava. Okay. Because Roberts, Jack Tours, I don't care what it is, it becomes a Helion bus. Yes. What route does a Helion bus do? Because every driver is different. Huh. Oh, that's well, terrible. That's, this is important information to know that they use different routes, and you need to be informed as to what the actual route is. Linda can talk to you about that. Um, well, I've never missed a bus before, but I was no. stranded yesterday. That's terrible. I'm sorry. And, to you know, that. I'm down from the Hilton, and I've been walking to the Hilton, Yeah. but yesterday I didn't. So I ended up being before the Hilton, uh, but there's no bus there. But no bus. So um, before you go, you and Linda need to talk and connect. She can help you with that route. Uh, we, I think we've got something that can show you what well, that is. Well, there's two pieces of information that I'm hearing. One is what is the route supposed to be, what? and then we need to connect to why the why? two are not doing the same route. Why aren't they doing the route that's the official route? So that's yeah. important for us to hear that that's what's happening. Because they have the power so, to do that. So, so we want to capture that. If you have anything in writing, we'd be happy to take it. But it would be good for you to talk story with Linda right after okay. the Q&A, if you're able to stick around. Otherwise, we'll make sure that happens before you go. Sounds good. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, there's, uh, who else? Let me, yeah, I think um, I promised that Kimo would say something, and then I'll come Is to Warren? you. Yeah, I'm, yep, I, and, and then I'll come to Warren, and then I'll pull him up and you. Okay, so two base yards. Let me make sure we capture this. Go ahead. Well, you're flex drivers. It means you need community drivers. Before we used to take half the, the, these drivers take their motor coaches home. In this case, we'll be having microbuses have to take them home so they can do the flex rides. Okay, let's capture that. Yes, so, need, uh, so community drivers, you're saying take the small bus the small and bus have that home stay at home the flex with the drivers. Okay, go ahead. Next. What she also brought about this crash is true. But it shouldn't be the administrator. The contract companies who pick up that contract, I suppose they have the dispatchers out there opening up gates, getting the, uh, the equipment ready, and they are the ones that are supposed to cover the runs, not the administrator. Okay, so we'll, we'll make sure we got that right. So it's, a, it's not the administrator, but it's rather it's the dispatcher. Right. Yeah. Okay, all right, and thank before, you. Before, like I said before, before anything can be done, you got to bring up the fleet. Yes. Without the fleet, we got nothing. We got nothing. Yeah. Also, talking about the illegal runs. When I say illegal stops, I'm meaning stops that are not designated. Okay. The problem with these guys doing this is that sometimes it becomes condoned by the county, meaning that we have one in Hilo where all the, st the one stop and only one stop is supposed to be at the Kuhio Plaza, not in front of Safeway. Okay, but so to you, accommodate people, yeah. the drivers have been doing that, and in a sense it becomes a condoned stop now, and it's not supposed to be. We should make sure, if you could give us the, in writing is where in, that is. Is there any in that, I, I, as a, as perfect. an example? That, that okay, perfect, because then that's important to know where they've been making these stops, and, and maybe that's something that this we should where the This is where your or your operations Please. manager goes out on the old group and, and follow these drivers <coughs> to make sure they're staying on the route, mm -hmm. and they are doing what is supposed to be done. Okay. I have a bus stop right outside of my house. We live, like, lower Waikia right up High High Street. Yes. And um, my kids don't ride the bus, even though they're, they could get a part-time job and possibly ride the bus because we only have two, two vehicles in our family and both my husband and I need them. Yes. But we've had people in the DOE tell our kids, don't get on the bus, it's not safe. 
Oh. Uh, so we need to really, and I grew up writing public transportation. Yes. In, in where I'm from. Yes. So we really need to market the bus to families. Um, a lot of us can't afford to have our kids on the bus system, yes. the DOE, because it's kind of it's expensive, it's expensive for working families. Yes. But if they could use the bus system for after school activities, if they're in sports, yes. or if they could get part time jobs, we can't afford a car for for our, for our son. And um, it would just be nice, you know, to market right. it that it's a safe alternative means of transportation to working families. Yeah, yeah, and and specifically for the children yeah. to be able to get them. Yes, that's your no, question. We gotta keep going. No, we gotta keep going. Got Otherwise, I'm thinking like they were. I wanted to piggyback on that at the mo at the time, Sorry. because when I brought it up to a lot of people at the hotel, they said you gotta be kidding. When I'm riding on the bus, I have no knowledge that this bus is going to go someplace else. Yes. And I got an appointment. I got to get to work That's at a certain time. I got a doctor's right. appointment. Yeah. Now, where's the bus going? You got it. Okay. You know, so it's veering off of the... Wait, let off let of the just add, uh, so yeah. people at the... So I don't think good point. that Flex is broken. Yes. Yeah, the real route. Yeah. So that's... I mean, the people from Honokawa that work at the hotel say, wait a minute, so I'm, as I'm going heading towards Waimea yeah. Town, all of a sudden the bus turns up full now. No, no, no. So I guess we need to make sure that that's clear, especially to the ridership on those routes, yeah. that we're not talking about those routes being the ones that would be flexed. Well, that's why I said chemo actually resulted by having that micro bus that would take care of those, right. those offshoots. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thanks, Warren. Um, I direct, I'm the director of Kinoli Baptist Enrichment Program. And six that's an after school program? After school program. Okay. And so 60 children, 50 families our service through through our mass transit and have been now for almost 20 years and so one thing i want to come tonight to say thank you hey, and right that on. you know <laughs> and, and i want people you know i want people to know that and mine is just one program i now realize there are many more programs that that help um, elementary and you know school age children and their families out because otherwise my parents the reason they love our program is because my staff is taken to the schools and the minute the bell rings, the kids meet my staff there, and then they are, they go with them onto the bus, oh. come safely, so parents know, because if they don't come and meet my staff, they get a phone call, your child right. didn't show up, and so we don't have children running around campus for two and a half hours lost somewhere, because, and, and as far as I know, I, we are one of the few programs that actually provides staff to ride with the children on the yes, bus. That's very helpful. <laughs> and, and so, you know, uh, I've been director now 10 years, and it was started many years before I got there. And, um, and, but, you know, last spring, things, that was the first time we had problems with, you know, no buses coming, bus, you know, barking down. And, and at first, communication wasn't, wasn't good. But I realized, because I had just called Tiffany to make an appointment to come and talk with her, find, you know, kind of find out, and then that's when all the, that weekend, before I could get to see her, the news broke. And so then it's like, oh my goodness, you know, I get it. And the, the cruise ships are taking the buses on Wednesday, because it always happened at the end of the year on, on Wednesdays. And I didn't know why. And so that was really good. And I have to say, though, in the, the staff's defense, I can't even imagine what they have dealt with yeah. over the past two months and what yeah. Tiffany has been yeah. through. Yeah. And, yes, and, and so I appreciate because there has been tremendous improvement. And thank you for getting the extra buses uh, because my program would have been cut. There's no doubt. In fact, I had to wait. That was a really hard thing. I had to wait all summer to like the week before school to be really sure I was going to have a bus. Yeah. And that was very, very stressful. But you know they were they were working on it and so i really appreciate all, everyone and now my question is do we have more buses coming soon Be okay. because we still have missing you know missing yes. bus on wednesdays quite often you know or late really late so i wonder and it's because there's no extra buses you know and what happens when a bus breaks down right okay. so um it's really important like he said we got to have the fleet yes. you know you got to have the fleet yeah. so um just to continue working on that and uh but just to know i was thinking that so you know and i have five staff members 60 kids 65 kids and you multiply that by 178 days of school every year we're we're a part of that million people who ride the bus right. every day yeah. and so i wanted to come and say thank you please keep working hard 
uh, just the communication the last few months from the staff has been much improved and that's really good. I understand how people, is the bus coming, but you know when they're uh, five, six, seven years old and they don't know what's happening, challenge. it's an extra challenge. So um, anyway, mahalo for all you do and um, I, I just really want to say we appreciate um, all the hard work that's being put in to improve our bus system. Great. Thank you. Thank you for those comments.